Hey guys, what's going on? Bobby here and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be doing a commentary over this onboard footage from the Saturday final from the Scuzo Winter Series at the AMR Motorplex just outside of the Homestead Miami Speedway. You can see on the bottom portion of the screen we got the starting lineup rolling. Uh, we were actually able to start off in fifth thanks to our pretty good performance in the pre-final. Uh, you can see we've got a lot of different drivers. And another real quick note, if you see a 600 series number, that is a senior class driver. And a 400 series number is a master's driver. So we'll be, be running with the seniors and masters together in one class. That's what they did at the Scusa Winter Series. There was uh, four rounds of the competition. There was two in January and two in February. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to all four rounds just in different capacities. I was there the first two rounds to do video production for Margay Racing and at the end of that weekend I was told that I wasn't going to be coming back to do video stuff in February thus I rushed around and tried to put all the pieces together to be able to get down there for February to race and I'll be talking about that experience as this video goes on. As you can see we've got a lap counter, position counter, We'll be looking at lap times as well. I uh, I wasn't the fastest guy there, but I definitely wasn't the slowest. Uh, a lot of people said that they expected me to be about mid-pack, mid-to-back-pack. And I knew that, you know, if we had the right setup, you know, the good positioning on track throughout the rest of the day, that we could just be smart and get a pretty good finish. And that's exactly what we did. As green flags out, I'm going to be kind of going through race commentary mode and just kind of analysis of talking about the weekend. You can see here right in front of me, I believe that's Zach Skolnick, Alexander Surly, two really good competitors out there on track. It's pretty cool to be able to start up in front with those guys. And then I had uh, Evan Stommer starting alongside of me uh, and that start as well. So, but yeah, I actually, uh, once I found out that I could race in this round, I pretty much, I went to all the people that, you know, are part of this Lauer Crew racing team. If you guys aren't aware, it's me. Brendan Lauer uh, was the co-founder of that, as the name implies. And then just last year, we added Austin Russell and Scott McClendon Jr. So I went to Brendan Lauer. I got his chassis. I went to Austin Russell and used his bodywork since uh, Brendan's yellow and blue bodywork didn't necessarily work out for the look that I wanted to bring to Miami. I decided I'd go straight factory with it, with the red and white uh, decal kit. And uh, it was also fortunate enough he had the stickers of his number and his name so I could easily take that off. As we see Evan Stommer going, he throws in that sweet pass there. We're going back down to, I believe that's P5. Uh, but so yeah, we used Austin Russell's bodywork, Lauer's chassis. I was able to get my engine that I used from last year. I got a new set of tires that I'm gonna be end up using this year as James Perkins gets by us there as well. You're gonna see a pattern here in these first opening laps as I try to find you know my pace and uh, uh, this track definitely, you know, most karting tracks demand that you are consistent. And I felt like, and I mean, I know that I really wasn't very consistent in Miami. I was very distracted. Uh, I've never really had the opportunity to be able to go and travel just in general. And so to be able to be at Miami two times uh, at the beginning of this year has just been an extreme, just awesome opportunity that I was able to take advantage of. So I'm you know, the race was obviously a big part of why I went to Miami, but just the atmosphere being in beautiful weather in February when back at home in the St. Louis area, you're stuck in the 32 degree weather. I pretty much, I didn't put as much emphasis on being as competitive in the cart as I probably should have. But the reason that I'm showing you guys this session over any other session is because just the pure amount of fun that I had driving this cart, as you can see, we're getting passed by Another couple drivers here, that's Charlotte Lone from Canada. She's another great national talent. That was one of the main reasons why I wanted to come and do uh, one of these majors. As you guys probably know, I would think most of you know, as Rockwell Seacrest now goes by. This is about the point where I'm getting tired of getting past, and you'll see what I mean here in the next couple laps. But as many of you guys know, I do this video production stuff for Margay, and there's not many opportunities where I've got the... Uh, resources and the potential to be able to run a major event majors being obviously this Miami trip uh, you go to Indianapolis in July Rock Island Grand Prix Quincy Grand Prix a lot of awesome events that Margate puts on that I just really don't have the the ability to go run 
So when I had this opportunity to basically have that weekend off, I figured, you know, I got to find a way to get down there. And there's obviously a lot of people that I got to thank, um, you know, starting just branching from my sponsors. You know, what's that like? Podcast, Labonte Photography, Dexco Home Renovations, Margay Racing, Skip Barber Racing School, all those people, as you can see, a sweet dive move into Rockwell Seacrest. You're going to learn that at Skip Barber Racing School. But no, uh, there's just, I mean, obviously all that initial support that I've gotten over the past couple of years has been very important. But then a lot of drivers at the track, you know, in Miami helped me out a lot. Brandon Moore, Jimmy Miller, uh, Kretschel, Scharf, a lot of those guys, you know, whether it be giving me tips or offering up advice or help, it's just all been very crucial to the performance at Miami. So without all those people helping me out, I would not have been able to do that. And then there's two other guys specifically that, you know, really spent a lot of time and, and helped me get fast in Miami, and, and that was Greg Dingus and Mark Schwagen. Greg Dingus, obviously, he was out there doing video stuff, and he made a sweet video from this, uh, this race weekend. He used some of the footage that I shot from the first two rounds, and I think the most of it, I'd say probably 80% of it, was stuff that he shot during this weekend that I went to go race. Uh, I will put a link to that down in the description below. After this video, you need to go check that out because that was a sweet video. And honestly, it makes me reconsider uh, pursuing video production after he did such an amazing job. As we get passed back by Rockwell Seacrest and another contender, Travis Milburn, a guy that's uh, run some stock cars, actually. He does some stock car racing, I believe, in the... I don't know if it's the k and or the ARCA. I believe it's k and West, I want to say, is what he competes in. But he's a k and driver, so it was cool to be able to have him out there. He actually took Gabby Chavez's seat for that weekend. I think Gabby had something going on, but... We were very lucky and fortunate to have Travis down there. He was a super fun competitor to race with. As you can see, I'll, I'll just spoil it. Pretty much me, him, and Rockwell battle it out all the rest of this race. And we've got, you know, just over under three quarters of a race left to go. But, uh, yeah, Travis and Rockwell put on a fantastic show. So back to Greg Dingus, you know, he did a really good job doing the video production stuff. And then he would, uh, you know, help me out with advice. I didn't prepare all the tools that I thought I should have brought for Miami. So he loaned me a lot of tools as well, and I can't thank him enough. And then another big player that helped in my success in Miami was uh, Mark Schwagen. I mean, a lot of you guys know Mark. Uh, if you know Mark, you know him as a photographer. You see him hiding behind the barriers, trying not to get ran over, but trying to get that picture-perfect moment. But uh, Mark actually did a lot of work. Before we even got you know, the cart on the truck to head down to Miami, he did a lot of prep work you know we went through and we basically took Lauer's chassis we, we took everything off of it and the process of putting the engine back together and cleaning it and maintaining it to make sure it's ready to roll all the body work everything like that and then when it gets shipped it has to travel in pieces and by the time I got to Miami you know we landed me and Brendan traveled together I brought Brendan Lauer with me by the time we landed and got to the track the cart was ready to roll and I was actually you know, expecting that the Thursday that I got there that I wasn't going to be able to get any practice on track. I thought it was just a setup day, getting oil in the cart, putting the body work together. As you can see, Travis Milburn puts a sweet pass, and now he's going to start attacking Rockwell Seacrest, which this this whole battle is just exciting to watch. So I, hopefully I'm not rambling too much over it, not giving it the credit it deserves as it goes side by side. Side by side through those 90-degree corners just really slows you down. As you can see, I'm able to get past Travis Milburn pretty quickly. At this point, I'm, you know, I... Once I saw Rockwell pass me, I was like, you know, I know this guy. I know I can be just as good or better than him. So I really need to not let him just drive away from me. So that's why I was a little bit more aggressive when Rockwell passed me. And then with Travis, I really didn't know him at this point. So at this point, I'm trying to work with Rockwell, try to, you know, two carts should be faster than one. So I'm trying to work with him at this point. And if he, someone's really slow, then I just try to pass him. That's kind of the mindset that I've got going on. But with Mark Schwagen, as I go, I'm going back and forth all over the place. Uh, Mark actually had my cart ready for me when I got there to practice, which that was huge because our Friday practice day that Scusa gives us, um, it, it rained out. We had all but one session that we ran. I think only one person, I believe Kayla Carlson, went out and, and actually tested in the rain, but everybody else under the Margay umbrella decided to wait out the rain and not practice in the rain and save their equipment. So without that Thursday practice, I definitely would have been completely lost come the race day. So. Uh, basically what this whole weekend looked like, and I've never done an Ignite away race from the Gateway Carplex, so that was another big step for me 
uh, you know, comfort level at least, you know, to, to not feel like I'm as far away from home as possible. Uh, just trying to get comfortable with the track, the layout. You know, I was there in January, so I kind of understood it a little bit, but they actually ran this third and fourth round backwards. So it was a little bit different than expected, as you can see, making a dive bomb pass on Rockwell Seacrest again. I felt like my cart was slower on the outside section of the track versus this inside portion of the track. But I'm not sure if that's just my driving style or just how I feel about it, but I definitely felt like there was some parts of the track where I could catch on these guys, but then again, the only reason that we were able to catch up, you know, all back together again on some of this occasions that you'll see as we get later in this race is just lap traffic. Lap traffic is so crucial and, and a lot of tracks, a lot, I'd say most karting tracks are very uh, momentum based and this track is very significantly momentum based and trying to hit inch perfect lines around this track just to get as much speed as you can. It's a very modern style kart track. It was actually built on a parking lot used for the Homestead Miami Speedway but then they've you know gone through the trouble of painting it you can see they've got the lines on the track, they've got the curbs. It's a very curb heavy track. You know, you talk about when you give advice to people at the Cartplex on whether or not you should hit curbs or not. You know, in the rental carts, you never want to hit the curbs. There's only a couple, maybe one, maybe two. I doubt there's two, but there's really only one curb that I can think of that you really attack at the Cartplex. Here, if you're not hitting curbs, you're not trying. So it was a very, you know, it's like you're taught over the past couple of years of only racing at the Gateway Carplex. You know, stay away from the curbs, stay away from the curbs, they make you slow. And then come into a track like this where you want to be hitting the curbs. It's like when you go through a 90 turn like this, you want left sides on the curb, right side on the curb, left side on the curb. But you can't overshoot the curb because if you overshoot the curb, there's these other speed bumps that are, you know, run perpendicular to the curb. So if you hit that, you're basically jumping up in the air and uh, your seats bottoming out. There's a lot of different aspects of this track that are just completely different stuff that I was just not accustomed to. Uh, so that was another big learning curve, but bouncing back here to people that, you know, helped me out throughout this weekend. I haven't mentioned Brendan Lauer, Austin Russell, you know, although I'd mentioned that I used their stuff without using their stuff, I wouldn't have been able to get down there. And Brendan Lauer, he, he helped me out a lot that weekend as well, you know, just kind of keeping me calm, cool and collected making sure I was hydrated. He did all the video shooting from the camcorders. So the little short montage that I posted from Miami, the little promo video, he shot all the camcorder shots from that, excluding the intro, all the intro stuff from, from Miami Beach was all shot by me. So, but all the on-track stuff he shot. And uh, it was cool because I don't know if you guys know this, but if you go further back into the channel, a couple years back, Brendan Lauer actually competed in the Daytona WKA event and I went to that event with him to do video production and to help him wrench on the cart and although you know and he would be the first to say this I know a little bit more mechanically about these carts than he does so he wasn't able to be as much of a mechanical help in Miami but he definitely sure was a good addition to bring on this trip as you can see a little peek out to the inside getting side by side with Rockwell Seacrest it was hard to determine who was faster and who was slower because you would be faster in some parts, but then slower in others, and then they would pass you back. And all this battling, I mean, definitely, we were we were on our own island. Because everyone behind us was, I don't want to say super slow, because that's kind of rude, but they weren't catching us. And then all the people ahead, all the Evan Stommers, Alexander Surleys, all those, all those guys, Jed Perkins, were just checked out. So we were just kind of in our own little world at this point. And I mean, we're 13 laps in to a 20-lap uh, race, so they're they're gone. They're gone. There's no way we're catching them. So it's pretty much we're just fighting for this, uh, you know, eighth place, seventh place, sixth place spot. So uh, let's see here. What else can I talk about? I didn't make any notes because I don't do that kind of thing. But, you know, I will say overall this this Miami trip was, was fun and it was definitely worth it. Like I said before, this was the first Ignite Major that I ever competed in. And I've done a lot of events at Gateway Carplex, but I've been comfortable at the Gateway Carplex. Gateway Carplex has been my home for kart racing ever since I started in early 2016, doing just rental arrive and drives, then competing in the iDrive series, and then eventually you know, landing the current position that I'm in running in the Ignite series. So this was the first away race out of the comfort zone. And I will say this, that you know that tent program that Margay puts on, as you can see Charlotte having some issues. I don't know if she, I don't remember what she said, what her issue was. I think the chain, chain issue clutch issue i don't remember but she retires from the race at that point so everyone in this little battle gets plus one 
as I believe, up ahead, that we've got some lap traffic. Travis has run into some lap traffic here, so let's see what we can do. I know what's going to happen. A sweet double pass to the inside. Bobby Crew goes up one spot. That's one of those unfortunate situations with lap traffic where uh, it's not, they just don't let you by as easily as you'd think. It's just general lap traffic issues. And Scusa doesn't, did not uh, adhere to blue flag policies, but that's only because that those guys that we were passing were in a different class. So, and I don't know, there's probably different policies for different racetracks, but I believe that's probably the right thing to do just because they might be competing with masters on track. And if you give them a blue flag, they're going to get out of the way and slow down. Whereas then they might get passed for position. So I kind of understand why they don't do the blue flags, but you know, that's a debate for another situation, a different time. So yeah, uh, I really enjoyed this Miami trip. If you haven't got the chance to do an Ignite Major and you are a kart racer, I definitely recommend it. Uh, the tent program is fantastic. If you know anything about wrenching on a go-kart, then you'll be set. If you don't know anything, you're still going to be set. They can pair you up with a shared mechanic. So you and three other drivers might have a shared mechanic so you can bounce ideas off of. If you're kind of comfortable with working on your cart, but you still want that other expert advice and help assistance throughout the weekend, they're always willing to do that. You can also have your own dedicated mechanic where you pay just to have one mechanic. If you're trying to go in all out and you want the best mechanical help and you want 100% attention on you from a mechanical you know, aspect, you can go that route as well. But uh, yeah, going back, you know, the tent space, the it's you can just bounce ideas off of other drivers as well, and that's the cool thing with Ignite that you don't see with a lot of other uh, karting series is just the openness of the drivers to share setup and you know talk about what to do. There was a couple times where I sat down with Evan Stommer. He actually ended up winning one of the finals, so congratulations to Evan Stommer, an impressive talent. You know, I've when I started running in rentals, I saw him from a distance doing all the stuff that he's doing in Ignite. After we see this cool pass here to the outside, doing over the jumps in the blue painting, making a pass in the blue paint. Uh, Evan Stommer has just been an impressive talent to watch. When I was in rentals seeing all the success that he had, I was jealous. Just, you know, between him and Spike and Gage and just calling those, oh, they're just the Margate boys. Getting to know them personally and all their successes that they've had. Uh, they're a great group of guys. So. But I actually sat down with Evan a couple times throughout the weekend just trying to learn the line and get faster, and it definitely helped me out. I mean, he, he helped me out with my line significantly, and you're not going to see that. You're not going to see the top four drivers, you know, they're running, you know, X30 senior doing that kind of stuff. So it's really cool that they do that. Also, I mean, they've got amazing trackside services. If you get into a situation, heaven forbid, where you get into the wall and you bend a rear axle, and you don't know a lick about changing a rear axle, you you know, they obviously charge you for it, but it's nice to have that kind of trackside service where you know you can get professional help and professional services. And then it's just the big three things is fast, fair, and fun. And that's exactly what I experienced when we went to Miami. I mean, you see me and Rockwell and Milburn dicing it up. I mean, this is the epitome of Ignite Racing right here. It's fun, it's fast, we're going 50, 55, 60. I'm not sure what's the gearing, how fast we were actually going, but you're going extremely fast for being inches off the ground, and it's fair. I mean, we're trading positions, we're swapping it up. It was a blast, and we got out of the cart, and I've got sweat rolling down my face, and I go through and I high-five Travis and I high-five Rockwell because, like I said at the earlier in this commentary, that this is the most fun I have ever had racing an Ignite cart, and this was my first time away from the Carplex. No offense to the Carplex, but it was just like one of those things like, wow, I didn't expect us to be able to dice it up that much. So it was very fun. I can't thank Margay Racing enough for allowing me to get down there and be a part of this and giving me the chance to run in an Ignite major that I've never, you know, obviously had the chance to do before and to be able to get that extra experience. 
and I guess the bottom line answer to the question of like, would I do it again? And without hesitation, it's a yes. I mean, it's it's a fun experience. And even if you don't own your own cart, they offer an arrive and drive program where they actually they build a cart brand new from scratch, and you can you hop in it for that weekend, and you get to race. You get to be like a cart owner, and once again, you've got the mechanic there with you to make sure that you don't really mess anything up. And that's a valuable you know option for all those people that are interested in being able to try out karting before they actually buy a whole cart and, and get into it. And then when you're able to travel to places like Miami and you're right outside the legendary Homestead Miami Speedway, or you're going to events like Indy, you know, and all the history there with the Indy 500, the Formula One race, the Brickyard 400, as we're coming here in the white flag and we're all bunched up. So this is gonna be an exciting last lap. I think we all transfer positions again. So it's, it's gonna be an exciting last lap, buckle in here. But uh, yeah, I mean, once again, I know I've said this a couple of times, but I can't thank all the people that helped me out and support me, all my sponsors. I have got a couple of big announcements about the 2020 season with potential sponsors that I'm working out on. Uh, What's That Like podcast is once again going to be on board. So that's another exciting thing. Once again, thanks to John at What's That Like podcast for letting me use this space to record this commentary. Uh, obviously, Margay Racing is going to be back on board, Skip Barber Racing School. I will be doing another one-day school this season, so looking forward to that. We'll be competing at the Ignite Series at the Gateway Cartplex in the Ignite Challenge Series that travels across the Midwest to some of the best karting tracks in the area as it's getting dicey here, coming to the line, trying to battle for seventh place, but it's not going to work. Milburn's got the run on the outside, and we are going to finish P8, and that's also where we finished for the Sunday final. So congratulations once again to all the winners at the Scusa Winter Series and the Ignite program. Uh, thanks to all of you guys for watching this race. Hopefully the commentary wasn't jumping around too much. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, like, but yeah, share this around. You know, it helps me out a lot. Try to gain attraction and attention. And, uh, you know, if you are interested, if you are an individual that wants to try to support me or a company that wants to support me, join the Bobby Krug Racing Team. There's also a link down below to a website where you can find those resources and see a video that talks about my background, how I got into racing and what my future plans are and how you can help me out. So once again, I've been Bobby Krug. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video I make.